And the two ladies, it was their grandfather, Grace Emmett and Mary Ann Hessen. Oh, that's great. So yeah. that's the... This is the... And this they had framed. This is the prisoner of exchange paper. Okay. And he was captured, let me see, uh, near Corinth. Mississippi. Mm -hmm. You know, they got Vicksburg on there, October 1862. And, you know, he signs it, he hangs on to it, of course, the whole paragraph talks about he will not take up arms or even build uh, fortifications of any kind. I mean, do anything to contribute to the war effort until he has been formally exchanged. Right. Um, that's his signature there, the Confederate officer's signature here. Okay. I actually don't know what I haven't sat down to study it enough to know what the name is. But that but they had that frame and Grace told me that it's been in the frame for quite a while. She just remembers getting it in the okay. frame. Uh, so it's been in it quite a while. And they don't necessarily know as much about their grandfather. I don't know. I don't think they knew they knew him at all. Okay. Um, they just know more kind of from the documents that was handed down and it was the grandfather on their mother's side. So it would have been their mother's father. And I think he just hung on to every hung on to some stuff, handed it down to her and got handed down okay. to her. That's about as much as I know on the kind of the okay. family story. And Does it say what unit he was? Yeah. Uh, the 15th Iowa okay. Regiment. Yeah, see, I couldn't remember and when I was looking at it. He's 15th Okay. And he was apparently living, I think, in Indianola. Indianola? Yeah, Indianola, Iowa, when he joined, because one of the papers uh, mentions that. And, and, it, and then it looks like he did move to Nebraska. See, I, I would like to help him out and maybe do some more research on this. Mm -hmm. But it says he died in, that looks like Alan Fulton. Oh, yeah. So he apparently was one of the many union veterans. One of the many. That's right. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Can we take a look at some? Yeah, this is the, his... that's the pension paper. So he okay. dies, and so and well, she's she... trying to apply for it. Married in Pleasant Hill. Mm -hmm. oh, his children must have been grown. Yeah. <laughs> well, and this is you know, after I don't even I didn't see oh, the day is, is he, 1916. Yeah, he died in 1916. So you're yeah. talking he lived. And actually, this is a certificate just that they signed that he was in the service, and it kind of described his service record. That's dated 1912. <laughs> so he would have been still been alive. So that gives another basic rundown of. Group, the Perryville group in Lynchville, Nebraska, yeah. are very proudly yeah. wearing their uh, ribbons. Oh, serious wound? Near Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Boy, he really. Um, he was there for a long. He was in for a long stretch of the war. Yeah. And I think it was almost as if he got discharged and then joined right up again. Because there are two discharge papers in here. Okay. And it's been a while since I've sat down and talked to him about it, but that's what I could gather. And I, I actually read through part of the letter. I don't think I deciphered the whole thing that he wrote. And it sounds like there's more letters, but they don't have them. Okay. Because when he starts it off, he says, Hey, it's, it's been several days since I've written to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're running low on paper, <laughs> and ink, and envelopes, and stamps, and I talked to my friend, and he still had some left, and so I'm writing to him now. So it sounds like there are some other letters, but they don't have to survive. Okay. Yeah, and we'll definitely shoot that. Oh, yeah. July 12, 1864, Northern Georgia. Oh, that's great. And he, I mean, what he does here, I was looking over it a little bit, you know, he talks about 
Some of the, how many of the guys were shot, killed, and in the last fight they just had. And he actually names guys he knows and what happened to him. And then he gets into talking about the fighting and I think the back and forth. But, uh, but he starts to get, getting into talking about the fighting. I mean, it's, it's, he takes up the whole letter. Yes. Uh, talking about how you know, they captured the red words. I like I said, I haven't read through the whole thing. Okay. Now he signs it very at the bottom. Okay. And he, he doesn't sign it saying Roberts. He signs it with his middle name, Leonidas. And I didn't know what his middle name was until I ate it. Yeah. At that. <laughs> oh wow. So we don't know for sure when he moved to Nebraska, but we can, but we can be pretty sure that he did. Yeah, yeah, from what it from looks like. Okay. And this is something he must have received and just kept. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see, obviously, we've been serving in the army of General William Sherman. And then here's the two. Yeah, I think that's the first one. It has 64. Oh yeah, re-enlistment as a something volunteer under General Number One Ninety One and Three Sixty. Yeah. 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 And then this is like his final, final on July eighteen sixty-five. You can see. Oh, great. So. Sam L. A. Knight, it's you. Yeah, there he is. Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, that's great. So I don't necessarily have a nice family story, and they didn't necessarily they didn't really know as much about it. Well, it definitely looks like he was a Nebraskan, and that's what worked. You know, that's what we have Nebraskans, and it's just to have this thing, this have been kept for so long. I wish they'd put it in museum quality. Uh -huh.